What's up guys, this is Steel Rain coming back at you with a summary of the results of the 80 amp and 120 amp LiPo discharge test on the Group 1 batteries in my last video. Now before I get to the results, let me just explain my testing methodology for a minute. I chose to use 80 amps as a good test benchmark for the high current applications that most mini quads can draw today. And I feel that an 80 amp continuous test load will mimic the most demanding situations that these batteries can be put through. Uh, to be honest, are there any batteries rated to continu continuously output 80 amps for more than 5 or 10 seconds without exceeding uh, their heat threshold or cycle longevity comfortably? Uh, I don't know, not, not from what I've seen in my testing, but to be honest, who is really pulling 80 amps continuous? Uh, from their setups for extended periods of time except for top tier racing pilots. All the batteries in this lineup were charged to 16.8 volts and they rested approximately 30 minutes and the 1500 milliamp batteries were drained down to 14 volts in bursts until they depleted to 14.8 volts resting which some went under as a result uh, of a long last burst. Now I chose 14 volts for the 1500 milliamp batteries because they seem to handle the high current voltage sag better than the 1300 milliamp batteries which is why I chose to lower the voltage sag limit on the 1300 milliamp batteries to 13 and a half volts before cutoff. Also to touch on the 120 amp test, yeah it was fun and interesting to see and actually perform but from what I saw from my testing and and what you see in the spreadsheet results, three, three to six seconds was the max burst times before the packs quickly hit 13 and a half volts under voltage sag. And I don't really feel, I really don't feel this test proved too much in ways of results or differentiating between performance. So this 120 amp test will probably not be featured in the future. Uh, in a nutshell, the results of the 80 amp test is a storyteller and to simplify the understanding and basic gist of this test, the batteries that had less burst and bursted for longer periods are the clear cut winners performance wise. But there's also other factors, you know, such as price, weight, uh, availability and physical dimensions that come into play, all of which will affect your decision on your purchase. So with all that being said, let's get on to the individual battery result. Alright, the first battery on the uh, testing chopping block was the China Hobby Line 100C uh, 1500 milliamp uh, G Plus graphene battery. What's uh, odd to me about this battery is it says it's 100C yet uh, its maximum is 110C burst which is you know 10 more C than continuous just seems kind of odd to me. It, it seemed to do all right in the tests. Uh, it weighs 192 grams. Uh, price on their uh, website goes for $24.99. Uh, internal resistance was at 27 with the um, with the plug and everything. And let's see here. It um, for the 80 amp burst test. It did 14 burst, which is it's not so great about mediocre. Uh, the longest burst was eight seconds and uh, after that the uh, testing temperature ended up being 115 degrees. Uh, for the 120 amp test it, um, it did a five second burst out of the total of five bursts that I did on that test and uh, ended up with 107 degrees. Uh, it's, it, it's an alright battery, I don't know I don't know if it'll get better with time or not, but uh, I guess we'll see. So we'll move on to the next one, which will be the Dynogy Ultra 2.0 ADC, uh, ADC Continuous Discharge uh, Graphene. And uh, this one did a lot better in the burst test, so I'll get to that in a minute. Uh, it weighs in at 197 grams. Uh, Costs approximately forty dollars on the Dino G batteries website. Internal resistance with plug and everything was twenty-four. 
and let's see here it it did a it did six bursts and its longest burst was 43 seconds I mean that's that's pretty amazing what it actually did without sagging below 14 volts so um, its final temperature after that test after the six bursts uh, was 135 degrees so moving on to the 120 amp test uh, of course five bursts they all did five bursts uh, its longest burst time and the winner there as well for uh, six continuous seconds um, and it ended up with a 117 degree temperature so next one up is the uh, indestructible quads black label ADC 1500 milliamp battery and let's see here it uh, weighs in at 185 grams cost $23 and has an internal resistance of 27 uh, this one did about the same as the the China Hobby Line battery um, roughly about the same it uh, had 14 bursts and its longest burst was seven seconds with a final ending temperature of 115 degrees and uh, that was on the 80 amp test of course uh, moving on to the 120 amp test it was let me see five bursts its longest burst was four seconds and it ended up at 105 degrees so move on to the next battery and this is the uh, 30 to 40 cycle old roughly about eight months old Turnigy graphene uh, 1500 milliamp 65c and uh, it actually did pretty well for for being an old battery it's actually got some good dings and stuff in it so let's get on with its uh, with its numbers here so it weighs in at 202 grams so it's the the major porker of the whole batch and if you've actually ever taken these apart there's uh, plates on both sides to protect the cells with this pretty pretty thick heat shrink and it's got a long plug as well so it could stand to lose a little bit of weight but it's a decent performer it comes let's see it, it comes uh, you'd be expected to pay about $26.77 uh, that's from the global warehouse I just chose global because uh, I usually get them you know within a week and shipping's a lot cheaper for some odd reason from the global than it is from the state that's right next to me it's really odd but anyway uh, internal resistance with plug and everything was 21 and let's see this one on the 80 amp discharge test did uh, eight bursts and its longest burst was 27 seconds which is actually pretty good uh, the astounding thing to me is the the final temperature after the burst was at 115 degrees so pretty low and th this 1500 milliamp as well as the 1300 milliamp were the only two batteries to actually get the longest the longest burst on their first burst cycle so they, they expended all their energy pretty much right off the bat and they they seem to be a little bit more uh, tolerant to temperature because they didn't seem to need to warm up or anything they just went ahead and did their thing until they went down to 14 volts so that'll be the uh, end of the 1500 batteries so Next, we'll go to the China Hobby Line 1300 milliamp 100C battery. And uh, this one did a lot better than its big brother. It comes in at 172 grams, cost $19.99, and had an internal resistance of 29. Um, it did two bursts, and its longest burst being 51 seconds uh, before it got down to 13 and a half volts so that's that's pretty remarkable 51 seconds there's I don't think anybody's gonna be bursting that long you know at uh, 80 amps so uh, final temperature was 140 degrees 
you know, it's, it's, it's pretty high, but considering it went down to 13 and a half volts and it bursted for 51 seconds, uh, it really isn't too bad. All right, and the uh, 120 amp test, five, five bursts, of course. Its longest burst was four seconds, and the final temperature was 107 degrees. So, not a bad battery for 20 bucks. So, go ahead and move on to the next, which will be the Dynogy Ultra Graphene 2.0 uh, ADC discharge. And uh, this one did pretty well as well, you know, just like its big brother, it, it held up its own on the 80, 80 amp discharge. <laughs> Uh, it comes in at 178 grams, weigh, uh, costs $35, and has an internal resistance of 32, including the plug. Uh, during the 80 amp burst test, it did three bursts, and just like its big brother, the biggest burst came out of the second, the second burst after the pack had slightly warmed up a bit. So three bursts total, and the the max burst time was 54 seconds which is outstanding I mean that's a long time to be bursting at, at 80 amps and the final temperature was 152 degrees uh, I know I know some of these temperatures are getting out there and it's kind of unrealistic but none of these packs puffed showed me any signs of of any sort of distress and actually cooled down pretty quickly whether or not that affects their their cycle life is, is yet to be seen. I'll have to get back to you on that. But um, it, it's a pretty good performer, you know. I, I've tested their uh, their previous iterations, the uh, the 70C graphene uh, silver packs, and they were nowhere near close to this. Not 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 even in the same category. So they've definitely stepped up their game with these new orange packs. That's for sure. So call uh, and uh, next is the 120 amp test on this one uh, five bursts as long as burst being three seconds and the final temperature ended up at 104 degrees so move that one to the side next we'll move on to the infinity race spec 1300 milliamp 90 C lipo and let's see here it uh, weighs in at 158 grams so the lightest lipo out of the group also the smallest by far uh, was 24.99 you get them from numerous places uh, currently 24.99 from Banggood with an internal resistance of 32 this one did pretty decent on the 80 amp test it, it uh, had four bursts before it depleted and its longest burst lasting 44 seconds Final temperature after that test was 150 degrees, about about on average for where these packs were and uh, that kind of abuse they were going through. So moving on to the 120 amp test, it did five bursts, its longest burst being three seconds and the final temperature being 110 degrees. There's that one. And of course the last but not the least in the, in the uh, testing category. It will be the Eternity Graphene 1300 milliamp 65C. Uh, this pack uh, weighs roughly 174 grams, costs $25.38 from the Global Warehouse, and has an internal resistance of 24. And just like its big brother, it's roughly eight months old with between 30 and 40 cycles. Uh, it did two bursts on the 80 amp test. Uh, like its big brother expended most of its, its energy on the first burst. Didn't need to heat up, just went for it. And uh, it's, the, it's the winner out of the 1300. It had a 50 sec, 57 second burst. And uh, ended up with a temperature of 146 degrees. Um, on the 120 amp test, it, uh, you know, five bursts, of course, again. Its longest burst was four seconds before it got down to 13 and a half um, with a final temperature of 101 degrees. So I did actually enjoy testing all these batteries. My first time really doing anything like this on camera. 
and it's a lot more work than it looks like but it was fun to do it you know at the same time uh, if you guys have any comments uh, questions suggestions uh, go ahead and leave them in the comment section I'll try to answer them to the best of my ability uh, if you enjoyed this video and, and the information um, go ahead and like subscribe do whatever you know I'm also gonna leave a, uh, a link to the uh, spreadsheet down in the description along with uh, where you could get these batteries from right now um, you know and of course that that always changes from here and there you know Hobby King always has sales and uh, you get them a lot cheaper than what I stated and I've also seen the Dino G Ultra Graphene's going on sale our RC groups for uh, roughly five five six seven bucks less a pack uh, depending on who you get them from so you know take that as you will but uh, anyways it was fun uh, you guys go ahead and like subscribe and uh, see me on my next video as a matter of fact I'm gonna mention that right now this will be my next upcoming deal right here and review will be the new Mobius Mini so that should be coming up coming up here next and I'm hoping I'll be getting my uh, boss cam commander goggles in soon to do a review on them but uh, we'll have to see on that anyhow thanks guys and thanks for watching see ya